To pave the way toward financial prosperity, it's crucial to find out the mistakes that can lead you toward the depths of debt and financial instability, and who's better to guide us through this financial maze than Warren Buffett, the venerable guru of wealth building. So let's dive into the video and explore eight things that Buffett believes poor people waste their money on. Unused subscription services. Did you know that more than 70% of consumers waste over $50 each month on subscription services they rarely use? One common culprit is signing up for free trials and forgetting to cancel them once they expire. According to Buffett, unused subscriptions are undoubtedly a waste of money, and we wholeheartedly agree. Subscription services can indeed become a financial pitfall if not monitored carefully. We have all our go-to subscriptions for things like music streaming, gaming, and magazines, yet some people end up with multiple subscriptions for similar services, like having both Spotify and Apple Music, or subscribing to PlayStation Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, and Xbox Game Pass simultaneously. And how can we forget about those gym memberships? Many people sign up with good intentions, but rarely go. A study by Fridge Raiders found that while 23% of Britons have gym memberships, only 12% use them regularly. So, it's essential to check your subscriptions regularly to ensure you're not pouring money into services you're not really using. Canceling those unused subscriptions can add up to significant savings over the year, keeping your finances in check without wasting your hard-earned money. Buying new cars. Actually, I picked out the car I have based on the fact that it had airbags on both sides, so that was a factor. It may be the first car of its type ever made with airbags, but... I think my car actually, it's both heavy and has airbags, and, and those are two primary factors in safety. I don't think a safer car is necessarily being made. It might be safer to drive around in a big heavy-duty truck or something, but I'm not ready for that. Incidentally, on a car, I look at that like anything else. It would take me probably a half a day to go through the exercise of buying a car and reading the owner's manual and all of that, and that's just a half a day I don't want to give up in my life for no benefit. Warren Buffett suggests going for used cars and sticking with them as long as they remain dependable. He's known for holding onto his cars until his family practically begs him to switch. Why? Well, think about this. A brand new car gleaming at the dealership may be tempting, but it's a swift descent into depreciation. In just the first year, it can lose a hefty 20-30% to 30 of its value. You won't believe it, but most of the millionaires do not drive the latest models. In The Millionaire Next Door by Stanley and Danko, they revealed that only 23.5% of millionaires opt for brand new cars, while a whopping 55% prefer vehicles older than two years. So if they're not splurging on new cars, should you? Let's say a person is spending $60,000 on a car, using it for three years, and then selling it for $25,000, repeating the cycle. He is also paying out extra for sales taxes, registration fees, insurance, maintenance, and likely finance charges. The annual cost of car ownership stacks up to $10,000, not including gas. Now, on the flip side, there's someone else who goes for a modest $5,000 car, drives it until it calls it quits in 5 or 10 years, and then does it all over again. Cash payments, minimal fuss over repairs, and minimal registration and insurance costs, just liability. Their yearly car expenses? About $1,000, excluding gas. Now, fast forward 30 years. What's the difference between spending $1,000 annually on a transportation and a hefty $10,000? If you invest that difference at a reasonable 8% return, you could end up with a significant sum. So here's a practical question. Is driving a new car really worth it when you could potentially save and invest that money for a more financially secure future? Over-reliance on skincare products. Warren Buffett advises against splurging on skincare products and stacking them up unnecessarily. And this advice is not just to save money, but to ensure your skin's health. According to dermatologists, this is the right approach because overloading your skin with too many products can disrupt its delicate balance. This can strip away vital nutrients your skin needs to stay healthy, potentially worsening issues like acne, rosacea, and eczema. This vicious cycle leads to buying even more products to fix the problem we've created. The key? Find a simple, effective routine to save both your money and your skin. And here's an eye-opener. You don't need to break the bank for quality skin care. Your local drugstore has plenty of fantastic options. While their packaging might not be as flashy as high-end brands, they get the job done. Why spend a fortune on a fancy eye cream when a basic moisturizer can do the same job for a fraction of the cost? Similarly, a $7 cleanser can work miracles just like a high-end $200 one. But if you want personalized advice, 
Visit your neighborhood esthetician, a licensed skincare professional. They'll analyze your skin and recommend products tailored to your specific needs. It's a smart move to avoid wasting money on skincare products that might not be right for you. Credit card debt. We would say, even though we, we issue lots of credit cards, I think we'd say if, probably if I had one piece of advice to give to young people of, you know, that across the board, it would be just to don't get in debt. It, uh, the game plays a lot easier if you're a little bit ahead of the game than, than if you're behind the game. And Ben Franklin said that long ago in better terms, which Charlie can recite. But, but there's a real difference. I get letters every day from people that are in all kinds of financial trouble. And in Warren Buffett's opinion, credit cards can be a money drain for those with limited financial resources. While credit cards offer enticing benefits like cash back, points, and travel miles, Warren's wisdom suggests that these perks only make sense if you're diligent about paying off your balance every month. If you don't pay in full, you could be slapped with a hefty interest rate, sometimes as high as 20%. That means you're essentially throwing away an extra 20 cents for every dollar you owe, and as most of us know from personal experience, falling into credit card debt can happen faster than you realize. So why are credit cards a potential pitfall, especially for those with limited resources? It's because many people in tough financial situations can only manage the minimum payment each month. And that's where the trouble begins. Most of your hard-earned money ends up going toward those interest charges, making it tough to chip away at the actual debt. Eventually, your credit card bill could end up in collections, racking up even more fees. So, it's better to follow a simple savings strategy. Set aside a small amount of money each month, even if it's just $10 or $20, for emergencies. With this safety net, you won't need to rely on credit cards, keeping your financial future secure and avoiding unnecessary debt. Lottery tickets. We see that with people that win the lottery, people that make more money, they still have the same problem. Right. Because they have that poor man's soul. Just like most pro athletes, you know, they make millions of dollars and what, 65% are bankrupt five years later? It's because they come from poor families. That's the frightening thing. We've got to change what we teach our kids. Right. Try to change that, yeah. that soul, that DNA, and introduce a real difference. Now, let's talk about lottery tickets. Warren Buffett, the investment wizard, considers it a waste of money. Why? Because they're not a fast track to riches. He's all about playing the long game when it comes to wealth, not chasing quick thrills. Speaking of numbers, the chances of hitting the Powerball jackpot are about 1 in 292 million. Those odds are, well, not in your favor. Warren Buffett and other millionaires aren't keen on the lottery because they know the odds are stacked against them. Now, let's talk about the impact on your wallet. Believe it or not, people earning less than $10,000 a year spend an average of $597 on lottery tickets, which is a hefty 6% of their income. So the takeaway is simple. Skip the lottery tickets and you'll be on your way to financial peace. Millionaires get it. They stay far away from the lottery tickets to maintain their financial stability and keep debt at bay. They'd rather invest in stable financial opportunities and avoid unnecessary expenses. Video games. Rich folks understand the importance of their time and avoid wasting their money and hours glued to a screen. According to 2015 data from Nielsen, adults in households with annual incomes below $25,000 spent considerably more time on media consumption including TV, video games, and radio, compared to those in households earning over $75,000. Video games can be a financial and time drain, but that's not all. The World Health Organization recognizes video game addiction as a mental health disorder characterized by persistent gaming thoughts, distressed when unable to play, increasing gaming time to find satisfaction, an inability to cut back, reduced interest in other activities, negative impact on work, school, or home life, hiding gaming habits, and using gaming as an emotional crutch. Sitting for extended periods while gaming isn't as harmless as it seems. It can lead to health issues like heart disease, diabetes, and even some cancers. Instead of obsessing over virtual achievements, we can make exercise a priority, and it can be enjoyable. Walking your dog, exploring local trails, or taking up martial arts are great alternatives. Why? Because no matter how skilled you are in a game, those virtual achievements won't translate into real-world wealth or physical fitness gains. Frequently visiting fancy restaurants. Surprisingly, even Warren Buffett, one of the richest people globally, uses coupons for his McDonald's orders. 
Fancy restaurants mark up their prices significantly, often by 300%, to cover their costs like labor and rent. Despite grocery stores' prices rising due to inflation, cooking at home remains a much cheaper option. Still, a common financial mistake many of us make is excessive dining out, with the average person spending around $300 per month at restaurants. Self-made millionaires have a different approach. They dine out less, spending $200 or less per month, according to the National Study of Millionaires by Ramsey Solutions. This reveals their money-saving mindset. Having wealth doesn't mean overspending on things you can get for less. Moreover, it's not just about saving money. It's also about making healthier choices. Affluent individuals often prioritize their health by buying fresh vegetables, fruits, and nutritious foods for home cooking. This not only saves them money, but offers a valuable lesson for those looking to manage their finances better. So, instead of reaching for a $5 bag of chips, consider opting for an 82-cent bag of carrots. It's a budget-friendly and healthier choice worth considering. Overspending on clothes Warren Buffett considers overspending on clothes a total waste of money, and he himself keeps it refreshingly simple when it comes to his wardrobe choices. He prefers classic, long-lasting clothing over pricey designer brands, and it's a money-wise strategy that really adds up. While millionaires could easily splurge on the hottest fashion trends, they often choose to be frugal with their attire. For example, Ingvar Kamprad, the IKEA founder, is known for shopping at flea markets to set a down-to-earth example. Mark Zuckerberg, the billionaire tech mogul, for instance, he's often seen in plain t-shirts that anyone can buy for around $14. Rather than splurging unnecessarily on high-end brands, he opts for comfort and ease. So what's the bottom line? The wealthiest people tend to avoid pouring their fortunes into designer clothing, favoring more budget-friendly options instead. You might wonder, what's in the closets of the rich? Well, it depends on the occasion. They might dress up more lavishly when they need to make a statement at an important event. However, for everyday wear, simplicity and practicality are their priorities. In a world where flashy fashion often steals the show, the wealthiest individuals remind us that financial wisdom includes making sensible choices, even in our clothing. So the next time you're tempted by extravagant attire, remember that keeping it simple can be a smart financial move. As we conclude this video, it's clear that building a secure financial future requires mindful choices and sound decisions. Now it's your turn to evaluate your own financial habits. Before you go, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on more valuable financial advice. See you in the next video. Until then, stay tuned.